Good morning. We have so many joyful things to celebrate and rejoice over today. Most obvious, of course, is uh, our first communicants who are getting ready to make their first Holy Communion. Today, they're all dressed up in beautiful white to represent joy. We also are celebrating today, this is the first Sunday of May. And May is the month in which we very specially celebrate and honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. So we had the May crowning at the start of Mass today. More about that to come. But I think that uh, there's a wonderful providence that is always at work, and I'm always amazed by it, in the way that the readings operate in the Mass. Because you know, the readings follow a cycle. The readings for today are for the sixth Sunday of Easter. And they're not specially for First Holy Communion Sunday. They're not specially for Mon uh, the, the first Sunday of May. And yet they speak right to the heart of this joy that we are expressing and we're experiencing today. You listen to these words from our Lord. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. I have told you this. We might ask, Lord, what did you just tell us? <laughs> what have you told us that our joy might be your joy and that it might be complete within us? And if we look right above this, we find in the same passage, our Lord has said, it says, Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. What does that mean? Think about what that means. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. How has the Father loved His Son from all eternity, from before there ever was a creation of the world, and unto the ends of eternity, which doesn't have ends, the entirety of the divine love, the absolute perfection, infinite perfection of love, infinite quantity of love. If we can imagine any kind of love, it's finite. What happens when we try to Im imagine a love that is so exuberant and so beyond limits that it has literally no limits? And that is the love the Father has for His Son and has had for His Son from the start and from before the start, you see. Now for our Lord to spin that around and say, as the Father loves me, so I also love you, should make our jaws hit the floor. We say, how can you love us we who are not infinitely perfect, we who are not infinitely wonderful and lovable, the fact that God loves us like that should fill us with joy. We who are His, His creatures, we made to, to serve Him. And yet He says, I don't call you my servants, my slaves, I call you my friends because I've called you into the very depth of my love. Amici, which comes from the same word amare, to love. And our Lord wants us to remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. We have a word that we use all the time. This word, alleluia. What does the word Alleluia mean? The word Alleluia is a Hebrew word. It's never been translated. It's never been translated into Greek or into Latin or into French or into English or Spanish or German. It's never been translated out of the Hebrew because it's one word that expresses everything. It's one word that expresses glory be to God. Glory to God. I love you with all my heart. And I'm so joyful. It's, a, it's the best word. That's what it means. 
the word Alleluia. It's such a joyful word. It's such an expressive word of our gratitude and of our sheer delight in the presence of God that we put that word aside during Lent so that we can be sad for our sins, so that we can repent of our sins, so that we're not constantly lifting ourselves out of the awareness of our need to repent by saying the word Alleluia. And if there's anyone who can say the word Alleluia, if there's anyone in the whole history of the world who has experienced the absolute joy and the absolute love of God, who has received it with openness, with a heart that is just bursting into fire in the presence of divine love, it is Mary. When the angel Gabriel came to her and he said to her, Hail, full of grace. This word that he uses in St. Luke's Greek, he says, it's one word and it's not found anywhere else in all of Greek literature. We don't find this word anywhere. It was coined by the angel. And it means you who were totally and completely, perfectly the recipient from all time, well, not from all time, from the start of your existence until and through now, continuing on, past, perfect, participle, you who have been totally and perfectly filled with the grace and the joy and the love of God. That's the word the angel uses for her. And I don't think he was calling her that. I think he was simply recognizing her as that. And her love for the Lord is so great that she says the word fiat. Let it be done unto me. Fiat miki. Secundum verbum tuum, according to your word. And that word of God becomes a baby in her womb. To have God in her. What joy, what ecstatic joy must she have had. Not only at that moment, for the, but for the nine months that she carried him in her womb and then for the, the years that she carried in her, him in her arms and held him by the hands and helped him to learn to walk and to read and to ride a bicycle if they had bicycles back then. The wonderful thing is God is inviting all of us into this Marian vocation. He desires for all of us the reality that He would come to dwell in us. And what we're celebrating today in these first Holy Communions is we're, we're celebrating the joy of receiving God into us as Mary did. What you are about to do, children, what you are about to do, parents, but of all of us to receive our Lord as He says, this is my body, this is my blood. The totality of Christ, all of His love, all of His self, body and blood, soul and divinity, sacramentally, mysteriously and beautifully, wondrously present in the blessed sacrament. This is to become tabernacles as really and truly as Mary was a tabernacle to be recipients of the same Christ, the same Lord, the same God who became a child in her womb and who grew up in her home and under her motherly care and who died upon the cross for us and rose again from the dead. That same Jesus Christ we believe, we receive, and that should fill us with joy. There's a reason that during this Easter season, we, we, at the end of Mass, we sing one of these Marian antiphons, right? You, if you've been here for the last while anyway, you've seen that over the, next, the last seasons, we sing a different Marian antiphon. It might be the Salve Regina or the Alma Redemptoris Mater. And during this Easter season, we're singing the Regina Celi, why? Well, let's just think about the words. Regina Celi Laetare, Alleluia. Regina Celi, Queen of Heaven. Why? Because her son's the king. It's that simple. Laetare, Alleluia. Rejoice, Alleluia. Quihaque meruisti portare, 
because he whom you were worthy to receive and to carry in your womb, Alleluia, Resurrexit, Sicutixit, has risen from the dead even as he said he would, Alleluia. And then we tack on our little prayer. We say, Ora pro nobis Deum. Pray for us to God. Alleluia. Where does this Alleluia bubble up from? Where does it come from? And where is it, what sustains it? It's the very love of God. The very love that she knows and that she shares with us and invites us into. The love of living in intimate closeness with God himself. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us all recognize what we receive when we receive Holy Communion today. What these children are going to receive for the first time is to be received by us as it were for the first time. That we might be tabernacles of the Most High, that we might receive the totality of divine love and find in that love that our whole life is shot through with the radiance of that Alleluia, which is expressive of the totality of joy.